under finance budget report. Administration will update the, the budget for the board. This item provides an opportunity for the board's information and discussion. Hi, Susan, welcome. Good evening again, President Logan, Superintendent Thompson, Vice President Hedrick, and members of the board. Um, I will try to keep tonight's um, budget report relatively brief. This is actually the official opener. We, we talked to you last month a little bit about the at-risk and high-density at-risk um, issues, but this is kind of our traditional uh, fiscal year 21 budget opener. And we start tonight, as we usually do, with a look at the current year budget and how it's performing. So our, we're gonna focus specifically on the general and supplemental general fund as of January 31st. And with five months of fiscal year remaining, so 41.6% of the budget year still remaining, we have 55.13 of budget authority remaining. Um, and for those that are not familiar with K-12 business cycles, this seems to be a little bit um, backwards. But again, if you recall this chart of our expenditure curve, you can see that we start the fiscal year off relatively slow in expenditures, and we grow to kind of our normal height in November when um, we're paying a lot of our bond payments and longevity. And then we, although this wouldn't include bond, so longevity payments, and then we somewhat even out until we spike in June with our teacher lump sum payments. So for K-12, we need budget authority retained until we get to that last month of the fiscal year. So right now, um, historically, we are performing pretty much in line with where we have been for the past six years. Um, we had a slight dip last year, but that was primarily because we were making transfers a little bit earlier than normal. Um, we've continued that trend. Um, so for the most part, the budget is working as we have planned it to work. So that is budget good news, if you will, for tonight. Um, there is, of course, some not so pleasant items to talk about related to budget. Um, the first one has to do with our enrollment adjustments. So I think when, if you recall when we talked to the board when we were planning for fiscal year 20, um, when we plan the budget, we know what our base enrollment is because um, under the new formula, it's the higher of the two previous years of FTE. That's kind of your base aid number but your weightings are based on current year enrollment. So we estimate where we think we're going to be for number of at-risk students, number of ELL students, um, some of those larger categories where we get additional funds for those high needs populations. So if we estimate high so we can capture as much budget authority that we, that we can and we don't have to republish when we kind of finalize. So we anticipate some reductions based on those estimates coming in lower. That's, we had provided that explanation and then when we talk about how much new money we're going to get, we, we tried to tell the board, here's what we really anticipate new money, but here's what the budget's going to say because we have this estimating difference. Um, additionally though, there's the actual enrollment count impact. And so right now we're going to be looking at about a $3.8 million reduction to our adopted legal max in the general fund, which is that combination of our estimates being a little bit higher than, than they should have been, which we anticipated, but is also impacted by students not being in attendance on 920. And that, unfortunately for districts, not only kind of gets you in the current fiscal year, but again, it's now your base for the, either one of the next two fiscal years, depending on which one you use. So it kind of hits you twice. Um, and that's unfortunate when that every dollar to serve our high needs populations and our regular ed population is so critical. Um, right now that, that division is about half, so about half that $3.8 million was, were our budget estimates and the other half were students not in attendance or other audit adjustments based on FTE counts um, during the KSDE audit. Um, so those that enrollment piece is really critical. Um, it kind of leads us into some of our fiscal year 21 budget challenges, and we'll kind of start with our overall declining enrollment. Um, again, because our base aid is driven off of our enrollment numbers, the fact that we are in a slight decline overall is impacting the number of dollars coming to um, the district over time. Um, we're seeing about a 3% decline in the past six years, elementary being kind of the biggest um, challenge for us, 
Th those declines are actually being offset by a small um, increase in secondary middle, um, flat enrollment at the high school level, and then some alternative increases. So, but overall, we're at a 3% decline, which again, year over year, is impacting our, um, our, our budget. Um, so if we kind of forecast out at a very high level, we'll, get, we'll dig more into the weeds as we go through the next few months, but right now, I've given you kind of a historical look at money we received in 1718, 1819, 1920, and, that what, and the monies we anticipate receiving in 2021, 21, 22, and 22, 23. You can see we are kind of at a revenue cliff as we get ready for fiscal year 21. Those bottom three years under the formula are sitting at 3% base aid increases. 1920 was a 6.5% base aid increase because of the inflation adjustment of $90 million. That gave schools across Kansas kind of that one-time infusion of inflation, but because Gannon 7 said that was sufficient, we don't have that ongoing inflationary adjustment in these next three years. So that we're basically to getting about half of what we've received in the past two years. Um, because of declining enrollment, that 3% for us will be a little bit less than 3%. Other budgeting challenges um, we'll be looking at, certainly our normal fixed cost increases, which traditionally <coughs> run anywhere from three to five. Um, we'll be starting to meet with our, all our program um, managers here in the next month. So our hope is to bring you back in March, um, kind of that first estimate of, of where we anticipate utilities and insurance and those types of things. Um, we've already talked to the board about our transportation increase, um, certainly some sort of wage package, um, and then other normal budgetary pressures that we constantly face in the terms of deferred maintenance, the hard to fill staffing issues, um, increased technology needs, and certainly those ongoing program challenges. Um, Mr. Davis talked to you um, at length about all the things going on legislatively many of which have a direct budget impact. So it will be very critical for us to monitor the situation throughout this session so that we can evaluate each one of these bills. What's its fiscal impact? Do we need to get up to um, Topeka and to provide testimony? Do we have Mr. Davis provide testimony um, at the many, many bills he's tracking at this point? Um, it's just a lot of balls in the air that we're trying to, to juggle to figure out where are they going to land and what the impact will be to us. So as far as kind of looking at our budgetary next steps and what we were going to bring back to the board, um, we will bring you a, a deeper look at anticipated new revenues, exactly where we think those are going to be and what the board might have in terms of options there. We will give you a first look at our fixed cost estimates and kind of give you an idea of what those expenditures are in comparison to new funds coming in. And then certainly we will continue to monitor legislative action, which could impact the budget, we, which we will have to build in and address. And I'm gonna add one last piece is, as we begin this process, we have to keep our eye on the target and that is our strategic plan. And I'll just continue to beat that drum because this is what we had said that we were going to do and that plan is our roadmap and in order for us to be able to get the outcomes that we're looking for, we need to make sure that we wrap the dollars around the things that will get us to our target goals. So I just wanna keep that, for you to keep that in mind as we continue to move along the budgetary process. So tonight we just wanted to kind of give you that first kind of overall look. We'll start to, to dig into those areas just a little bit deeper in March. Um, but we did want to report obviously that the fiscal year 20 budget is proceeding according to the plan that laid out by the board. Um, the fiscal year 20 legal max in the general fund will be reduced, impacted in part um, by attendance issues, um, which impact both weightings in the current year and then base aid funding coming in in one of the next two years. Fiscal year 21 new funding will be about half of what we've been receiving in the previous two years under the formula, which again is a combined result of that smaller base aid increase and the slight declining enrollment that the district is, is experiencing. 
and then f the fiscal year 21 budget planning certainly is is well underway the district once again this is nothing new for 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 us is that we are facing some budget uncertainty um, certainly at, at the legislative level around at-risk funding and other legislative items that could particularly impact the district and I will answer any of questions related to that kind of brief overview tonight. Stan. Uh, thank you. Uh, Susan, uh, when you say the, the budget has been proceeding according to plan, uh, I know there were some concerns last year when we um, were talking about reserves. Um, were your estimates on what you thought we were going to be able to hang on to with reserves, um, have that, has that also gone according to plan? So, uh, or is that slightly lower, or slightly higher? So, uh, where we're at as far as kind of those big areas that kind of have cash cash balances, the health plan is performing relatively well. Um, in fact, we we don't anticipate at this point having to adjust for um, a premium increase um, at the beginning of the next calendar year for employees that that's again things things can happen so that's sure that, that's just an uh, an early estimate that unless something goes really south on us the the plan is performing well that's uh, has a lot to do with the ehat committee and the work that they do to watch that plan and and really control costs so um you know hats off to that group for the work that they do um capital outlay again we had 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 kind of through the benefit of assessed valuation increases and conservative spending, if you will, because mostly we just didn't release as much to them maybe as we could have because we were very concerned about not having enough balances to get the work done um, before state aid and tax payments came in. That fund ended very well at the end of fiscal year um, 20 or 19. So as we've gone into fiscal year 20, we had we were able to release to them a fairly um, significant amount of funds to do some some work in. So right now we're estimating that fund will end in the 22, 23 million dollar range. So we're comfortable at that level that that's enough of a base. Again, assuming that hopefully we'll have another um, nice increase in assessed valuations that we'll just have to wait and see, but that that fund is doing is doing well. It's not situated to cover all the deferred maintenance, but it can handle the ongoing issues and, and, and the plan that the facilities division has worked on as far as what projects that they're, they've got. And we're, we're fixing things. We're, do, we're making sure schools are safe places. Um, we're working on our cameras and we have our grant money that we're working with. So all of those things are, are working well. Um, we're not getting out far ahead, but we're more than keeping up at this point. And then what about the general and supplemental general funds? So reserves? everything right now, again, is we're, we're, we don't really have cash reserves in the general fund. Supplemental general fund um, usually will end the year with some cash balance. Um, again, we, we try very hard to make sure that the cash balances we have are in the allowed funds and they're not at a level where they're going to draw unnecessary scrutiny. And at, that point, at this point, the, we're probably sitting um, low in the state as far as overall cash reserves. So when and if, because we're, we will have an audit on our, on our cash reserves, I think Wichita will come out looking pretty good for our size. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, my question is, and I, I, if you could pull up the slide that has the <coughs> budget planning challenges on it, because I, I just want to make sure that, that everybody realizes, particularly our public, that this school year, this current, current school year, we received $19 million. But over the next three years, we're anticipating between eight and $10 million. So we're going to, right out of the box, be looking at $9 million less than we had this current school year, correct? Yes, yes. and if you recall some of the charts that we showed you kind of in the, in the process of finalizing last year's budget, we, we anticipated this next fiscal year, 21, to be rel you know, specifically challenging because of transportation. So just using normal fixed cost and transportation alone, you can see that between new money and those two items, we're kind of at a, a almost, we're not quite at net zero, but we're not too far from it. Yeah, we've almost spent yes. what we anticipate getting without even doing anything. Right. Uh, 
and and you know I think that's our challenge as a board this year we've got to look carefully at this and at the expenses that we have including transportation which we know is going to increase uh, and then make some decisions on how we best use this funding so but we're we're we've got nine million dollars less almost automatically and right. it could be more than that depending on what happens to that with that risk correct yes that and that certainly is why we will continue to fight the fight um, in Topeka because because of those challenges of where we sit just in the formula if they're compounded with a reduction in high density at risk if we lose that funding that that puts us basically 15 million dollars in the hole and that means cuts, which we don't like to do, don't want to do. Okay, Mike. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question and I, you may not know the answer and, and I appreciate that because this is from left field. You know, we've talked about this losing money in the next couple of years for a long time and I've been saying that year after year and the concern that we're getting into those problems. And as I was sitting at home the other day, they were, it was on the news that property tax is getting waived for new businesses and things like that and that's one of our jurisdictions is is if somebody if the city or the county waives property tax within our district we can override that at what point do we start looking at these types of options I don't want to stop economic growth because that's important to Wichita but at some point in time they're taking money from our LOB and keeping us from doing certain things that we might need to do with that money because we were depending on the state to fund us. You know, I know it's a double-edged sword and I know it's a tough question, but it's something that we might need to be looking into down the road so that we're not taking it in the chin. And we'll, we, we thank you for that, um, that statement and those questions and things for us to continue to ponder. And we will continue to ponder those things um, that you just mentioned because it does impact us that is a true statement what you just said but that is something for us to continue to ponder and watch and monitor to see how that may impact us in the future I understand thank you okay I see no other questions thank you very much thank you